the representative curves in plane stress. There is a tra in, in, in two D elasticity. There is a certain uh, tradition tradition in uh, engineering in representing curves in two D in two D uh, elasticity that represent give information about the situation of the stresses, the, the, the level of the stresses. And these are the isostatic, uh, the isostatic lines and the isocline lines and the maximum shear lines. I just to tell you that what are the isostatic lines? They are the envelopes of the principal stresses. So we know that at every point we have two principal stresses which are orthogonal to each other. If we trace the envelopes, we can obtain a family of two orthogonal curves which illustrate, which provide information about how the stresses are transmitted, for instance, in this deep beam from the support to the other support. So we have here the illustration of the maximum principal stresses are tangent to these lines here. They are tensile in the, in the lower part and they are compressive in the upper part. And the second principal stresses have orthogonal today. Uh, there are a number of, of equations. For instance, the equation of the, of the isostatics can be obtained in terms of the stress tensor, and you have that in the, into the, in the, in the slides, and you can obtain also the, a, a partial differential equation, a differential equation that can be integrated and which provides the lines of the, 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 the lines of the, the isostatics of the problem. Isoclines, isoclines are different, are lines in which the stress is no longer tangent to the lines. Along these lines, the stress are parallel to each other. Okay? This is used in the issue of photoelasticity. So if I can want to determine the isocline theta, I have to determine what is the locus of points where the stresses form an, an angle theta with the x direction. And again, there is an equation that can be op provided to obtain these isoclines. The maximum shear lines are the counterpart with respect to the shear stresses, then uh, isostatic with respect to uh, then the uh, isostatic with respect to the principal stresses. So. That's important for soil analysis. Soil used to fail because of shear stresses. So it's very important to determine where are the maximum st shear stresses. The maximum shear stresses are these two in the Morse in the Morse circle. So uh, they are orthogonal by construction. They form an angle of 45 degrees with the directions of the maximum normal stresses. So they are a, a family, the, the shear lines are a family of lines which are enveloping, which are tangent to the maximum and minimum shear stress, which are a family of orthogonal lines, orthogonal with respect to each other, which in turn form an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the isostatics. Okay? So you have just a look on this on these issues to get this information. That's not no longer important as it was in the past. So I just have a look, uh, ask you to have a look on them.